Good morning, folks, and welcome to another edition of City Hall Live. I am Joe Abeta, and my guest today is Jill Dixon from the Food Depot, Hi. Development Director, right? Yes, sir. Yes, from the nation's, one of the nation's leading food banks. Oh, you're right? too kind. Yes, so we got an awesome award last week. Yeah, so congratulations. Thank that news you. came out. Yeah. And it's awesome to know that we have one of the best in the nation right here in our community. Well, thank you. Yes, you guys do great work. Thank you. And we'll get into that. Yes. We'll get into that. But I know I've had you on several times, you know, and we've talked about, you know, how uh, we've talked about your, your food drives and we're going to talk about the Super Bowl later on and, and things like that. But I think it's really important. Can you tell us the history of the Food Depot? Where did this come from? Was it an idea that just, hey, you know, like, you know, a couple of community members got together and said, let's help out some people, you know, and then it kind of just grew into this 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 thing that it is today? It did. Um, our origins are sort of exactly that. Mm -hmm. I, I think that the best part about nonprofits in general is that wonderful people in communities see problems, mm -hmm. have a desire to fix them, and then take action to make that happen. Okay. Um, and the story of the Food Depot is much like that. Okay. Um, we actually started out as the Food Brigade. Okay. Um, we are in our 25th year now, so this is a great time to talk about where we came from. Yeah, um, okay, okay. But Catherine Cagle, who most of us know and love um, mm -hmm. from past squalls, got together with a few other people, a great volunteer, Nancy Porter and John Rochester, who's over at Morgan Stanley, mm -hmm. and some other fantastic people and said, you know, we there's a lot of waste at the restaurant level. There's food left over. There's hungry people in our community. We should be able to do something about this. Mm -hmm. um, Catherine was really instrumental in getting the Good Samaritan Law mm -hmm. passed, which protects people who donate food from any kind of liability, gotcha. um, which is a was a barrier to being able to provide food to people. Okay. Um, it really got in the way of people wanting to donate food because they were worried about the risk side of things. Okay, so, like what happens to it? How is it handled how after How is the it fact? handled after the fact? Like, gotcha. you know, is someone going to come back to me and say, like, my food made somebody sick? And, you know, people worry about things like that. Yeah. So she really worked on addressing some of the obstacles and barriers to people being willing to donate. Okay. And they got together and just started to piece things together, talking to restaurants, getting extra food, connecting it with people in the community, like the soup kitchens and hot meal programs. Mm -hmm. And it started really small and incrementally moved forward. And it was very clear very quickly how much of a need there was. Okay. And was there a network back then or was this the beginnings of that network you guys have now? This is the beginnings of that network. So, so there was no pretty, there was like a formalized network no, back then at all. It, we weren't a traditional food And this bank. was in the early 90s, right? This was in the early 90s. Okay. So we were incorporated as a nonprofit in 1994. Okay. Um, but it was a really, or 1993, okay. and then That's began fine. operations in 94. Fact checkers, so give her a break, fact checkers, okay, no, on that, I'm right, right there, okay. Well, hold so on a minute. The paperwork says 93. Gotcha. Um, it, but they really got together and saw the need and started to address it and just grew and grew incrementally. Mm -hmm. um, if you've gotten our newsletter, the 25th anniversary edition in the fall had some really great timeline background in there. Mm -hmm. um, and going to the old armory. And it was really when the Los Conchas fire hit that we had this okay. opportunity to become something more. Okay. Um, food banks are inherently are responsible for disaster <clears throat> relief. So during that fire- These were the fires in Los Alamos. Yes. Folks remember, um, yeah. So we were responsible for providing food to the emergency responders that were out there, to mm -hmm. the folks that were evacuated from their homes. Okay. And at that point, there was an old Albertsons that had been abandoned, essentially. And the owner of that property said, why don't you set up shop in here? You're going to need a lot more space than what we... Where were you guys at before? At the old armory in the Quonset hut. Okay. Um, All tiny right. Tiny little... Believe yeah. you? Okay. Okay. So there was like a little shelving around the perimeter gotcha. of the room. This would be a great place. I mean, yeah. it's terrific, but when you look at it in the context of what we are now... Yeah, it's, no way. No way. Yeah. Um, and certainly that's not equipped to deal with a mega disaster mm -hmm. where there's lots of people that are out of their homes gotcha. that need water and food and first responders needing fed and mm -hmm. it was a big deal. So we took over this huge space and I think all of a sudden everyone saw the potential okay. of... There is a huge need, not just for disasters like this, but moving into a new space makes us capable mm -hmm. of meeting the need that exists on a greater scale mm -hmm. than we have before. Okay. Um, and that was really a turning point. So, so uh, it went from there, and then you guys said, we got to formalize after the, uh, the Los Contras file, right? Yep. Was it Los, Los Contras? Los Contras. Or Los, Los Contras. Los the Los Alamos file, yeah. fire, there you go. We'll, we'll stick with that. Get my Spanish verb. Yeah, no, it's, in all, there. it's all good, yes, because we have people out there checking yes. in Spanish too. But um, so 
uh, that happens, yes. and then that's kind of where it kind of took off to where it was today, right? That was where when we sort today. of transitioned into being a traditional food bank. So okay. at that point, um, with Tony McCarty over at Kitchen Angels mm -hmm. and some other people, we decided to have the capital project to move into the Siler Road location um, where Kitchenality and Kitchen Angels remain. Mm -hmm. um, we've now moved to the building behind that we built a about five years ago. Um, but that was the point at which Sherry Hooper came in as our executive director. Mm -hmm. She had traditional food banking experience mm -hmm. and really had a, a solid, tangible vision for what we could become. Okay. And she came in and said, all right, it's time to start getting partner agencies. It's start, let's formalize a donation process from the grocery stores mm -hmm. um, and start moving towards that traditional food bank system, which is very highly organized at the national level. Yeah. Um, so we built the building, we moved in there, and before you knew it, we were distributing over a million pounds a year. So it kind of just started as to, let's partner up with this person. This person said, hey, I'd really like to partner up with you guys. And that's how this network began right absolutely it's because, all relationships yeah and it because what it's now today is you guys are serving 45,000 people we're serving about 57,000 57, 57 people I'm sorry I always say it's 40, okay it's there's like so many numbers 57,000 um, people in northern New Mexico yeah and you're we, responsible for yes and, and that, we have partners with like 145 other nonprofits that's that's crazy so yeah. so it became it, it became uh, that as a result of I mean I, I know forest fires and displacement of homes. But if you think about it, if there is a silver lining with this, it's you guys were the silver lining, the byproduct of this whole, of, of, of the fire up in Los Alamos, right? Yeah, certainly uh, yeah. in our form that we exist in today. And yes. if something like that were to happen again, talk about being prepared for it, We're right? ready, that, that, that's, that's our role. That's pretty awesome, right? Yeah. As opposed to being reactive now, you're proactive. Very much so. That, that, that's, that's amazing. And so, okay, so, Square footage wise, let's just talk about this. Okay. This is just a little factoid here. Yeah. Beginning square footage, today's square footage, as far as the, the food depot is, the food bank itself, the food. Okay, so I mean, the initial, if the initial store space that we had, if we even had to guess, I mean, before, even pre Quonset Hut. All right. Um, I would imagine that our storage space, warehouse space, if you will, is probably the size of an average bedroom. Okay, wow, um, so okay. So, you, you know, probably like a 12 by 12, maybe oh. a little bit bigger. The Quonset hut was bigger than that. Okay. Um, but we're talking- So 100, uh, you know, maybe f a less few, than 100. A few hundred square feet, A few hundred maybe. square feet, all right. Not huge. Yeah. Um, certainly not anything close to what mm -hmm. we are today. So now we are looking at a building that's 22,000 square feet. That's amazing. Um, and, yeah. and high, so cubic footage is yeah, everything so in warehousing. Yeah, so exactly. um, the cubic footage is way bigger than that. That's um, pretty awesome. And a huge portion of that, uh, the refrigerated space we have now is over a thousand feet in the square feet in the refrigerator, a thousand square feet in the freezer. Awesome. Um, so that alone is you know five, 10 times what the total storage space was when we started. That's, that's pretty amazing. Yeah. Okay, so at what point do you guys start to, because you guys, and we, we've talked about this, you have this very complex way of buying food, of being able to call people up saying, hey, we have this, well, we want to purchase this truckload, don't go to waste, we can put it together. When, did, when, does, that, when does that become a thing for you guys, where it's a daily routine for you, like buyers, you have food buyers out there, mm -hmm. or, uh, or food hunters, whatever you want to call them, looking for uh, um, you know, for food to bring back, to be able to disperse to the community. When did that, that start up? When did you guys have to, was that from the beginning? When did the system that you implemented, did you create that system yourself? Did, or did you get it from other uh, food banks around the nation? How did that happen? That's a great question. And I think that initially, food banks are highly collaborative, which yes. is something that's really important to always yeah. remember. So we're always looking at solving problems mm -hmm. together. Mm -hmm. um, but we definitely, in the beginning, probably purchased a little bit of food on our own, okay. probably closer to retail. Um, so it was just a little trial, a lot of trial by error, just absolutely. an experience of saying, hey, let's buy this. Hey, I know a guy that does this. You might want to get a hold of this, but it was kind of a word of mouth thing. Exactly. It and happened you, organically. And you go to conferences okay. and you meet somebody who gotcha. says, hey, there's a distributor who's working on produce access okay. over in the Western states. Okay. You might want to call this guy. Here's an email address. Okay. Um, and we connected there. And Justin, our director of warehouse operations, mm -hmm. has really evolved in his role to being able to identify those sources. Mm -hmm. He's part of a group of food banks called Dare to Share mm -hmm. um, that covers pretty much all the Western states. And they talk regularly and figure out ways to put food to good use. Gotcha. Um, so it's really, especially in the five years since we moved into this new building mm -hmm. with all this space that mm -hmm. we have wholesale purchasing power. We're able to take gigantic loads of 
produce of sta of staple goods. Mm -hmm. You know, we can order 40,000 pounds of beans at a time, mm -hmm. and we weren't able to do that before. Okay. So once you have that space and you have the logistics to handle a repackaging program through volunteer with volunteer power, mm -hmm. once you're able to do those things, you can fundamentally change your food access. Okay. Okay. So, okay. So then now, when is the because you guys have Super Bowl coming up. Yes. And Super Bowl is is soup. Soup. Soup that soup. you eat. Yes. Yeah, from a bowl. So when, when did that concept come up? How did that come about? Was that a, a, a food uh, a food depot uh, original event? Did I, you guys come up with that concept? Those or was are it all something? over the country. I gotcha. think that we were the first one in New Mexico to be doing that. Okay. Um, this will be our 25th Super Bowl yes. coming up on February so, 2nd. So is it the first year of the, of the food bank that yeah. this happened? That it, it just said, hey, let's have a, a soup competition and we'll raise money for it. Well, if you look at our history, we had restaurateurs that okay, were involved that's true. with us, right? That's true, so yeah. these were people who saw food mm -hmm. as, as this holistic sense. So it mm -hmm. made sense that we would have a food event mm -hmm. um, be part of our history. And for anybody that was here then i think you know we were in the wild oats parking lot for the first for super, super bowl, bowl. um yep. and it was just a couple of restaurants slapping together you know some terrific soups um but it really caught on and now we're at the santa fe community convention center yes. just right down the hallway right. every year and about 1400 people attend that event so and these are soups made by restauranteurs around chefs yep famous chefs world-renowned chefs that are within our yes. community they're making these specialized soups you purchase a ticket, which are going on sale this Saturday. This Saturday, they this go Saturday on sale. folks, and 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 then they go and they are able to t taste taste all the soups inside, right? Yep, and it's a competition. There's four categories: yep. so seafood, savory, vegetarian, and cream. Is there a best in show? There's a best soup okay. category, and okay. the truth is, everybody really wants to win. So yeah. these restaurants, who are terrific to begin with, this mm -hmm. is a foodie town, really bring their A game. They donate their time, their That's resources. Good. They develop a signature soup. Sometimes it's on the menu at the restaurant. Sometimes it's not gotcha um, and they show up and they put on a sh they put on a great culinary event it's yes. incredible um, so people who buy a ticket get a ballot um, and they get to vote for their favorite in each category and it's a pretty phenomenal event and it's a lot of fun I mean you can take the family it's a uh, you know it's kind of one of those uh, event things that you just family friendly yeah and you get to eat the best stuff in town at the time right it's it's good and you need to come hungry it's like yeah. you know thanksgiving if we just went through that yeah and you guys and you guys you guys sell out right you guys sell out all those tickets um it, it gets pretty full yeah, yeah so you're gonna have to you can get them now where can they get them it's all gonna be online through the fooddepot.org okay um we're gonna sell them ourselves this year which okay. is a new a new thing so just so, go to fooddepot.org fooddepot.org you can buy your the tickets, tickets there okay. they go on sale december 1st and because okay. it's our 25th anniversary the tickets are way cheaper than they've ever been before nice, nice. so for the first month that tickets are on sale december the month of december tickets are just 25 dollars. okay that's great um starting in january they go up to 35 dollars, and they'll be 40 at the door mm -hmm. um the thing that's new this year is for all the people who are like yeah i would love to go to super bowl but i can't do a crowd that size mm -hmm. it doesn't feel good good it's mm -hmm. not my thing we have a vip tasting hour this mm -hmm. year that's an hour before it opens to the general public okay. a it's preview a preview hour will, yes um it's limited to 250 people really really small group and those tickets are 75 dollars a little bit more mm -hmm. you but you get to access those soups first you get to be in the room when it's a little quieter and you're contributing to a very good cause Every single dollar raised from this event is going to go to feed people in our community. That's right. Period. That's right. That's awesome. Yeah. That is that is really cool. Yeah, it's a nice change. When is it? January? It's going to be February, February 2nd. February 2nd. February 2nd. Okay. VIP tasting from 11 to 12, okay. and then the general admission runs from 12 to 2.30. Okay. February 2nd is Sunday or Saturday? Saturday. Saturday. Okay. So February 2nd. Yeah. Awesome. That's great. So, okay. So you got Super Bowl coming up. Let's talk a little bit before we wrap up. I want to just talk sure. about uh, food drives, what's going on right now. Let's, 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 let's uh, clean some house here a little There's bit. There's so much going on. Yeah. Um, we just wrapped up Thanksgiving, which was really fantastic. Mm -hmm. um, Giving Tuesday was yesterday. The community was so incredibly yeah, and that's engaged where the, and generous. Yeah, you get matched and stuff. I think it's on Facebook or somewhere where they Facebook match Facebook matched $7 million. It was gone in like four minutes, oh, okay. I think. Okay. Um, but we, Somebody went and donated $7 million to one organization. Probably. Right? You, know, you never know how right. that happens. Who knows? But yeah. We had a couple of generous donors who put up matches for us yesterday we awesome. saw a lot of people really engaged and i wanted to say thank you yeah. for that um it's always so inspirational to see that kind mm -hmm. of generosity mm -hmm. um but really through the holiday season you're going to see all of the major grocery stores in town doing different 
initiatives, whether mm -hmm. it's collecting cash at the register or asking you to buy a bag like at Sprouts, I'm sure you've seen that. Mm -hmm. uh, that food and th those funds come to us. So we would really encourage everyone to open your hearts um, and your wallets a little bit when you're there at the grocery store. It's an incredibly easy way to engage with us. Um, but certainly there's a lot of a lot of things happening. There's food drives all over the city. All over. And also, just to give you a heads up, and this is something, if you want to donate, you can go to fooddepot.org. Yep. You can donate to them and know that they can make a dollar stretch further than if you were to go out to a grocery store and purchase groceries. And just think about it, folks. It's easier to go to your phone, go to your laptop, go wherever you hit donate. Hit the button. And they will take care of it and know that that money is going straight to helping out families that are uh, starving, kids that, that want to eat, they know how to do it. They can make a dollar stretch to like, Absolutely. I think like four meals four or something meals. like that. Because yep. they buy in bulk and they know how to spend. And then it's, it's a good way of, 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 of giving, a quick way of giving, an easy way of giving and, and making yourself feel better during that holiday. Yeah. But don't only do it during the holidays because hunger is an all year thing and we've said that before. Yeah, so have. you can go to fooddepot.org uh, and you can donate to a great cause. Thank you. Right? Yep, it really okay. helps us fill in the blanks. Okay. Um, we're able to choose which staple foods we really need to get protein items that families really need, mm -hmm. um, access that fresh produce to make sure we're providing nutritious food to these families. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it, it's terrific. If you're vacillating between which one you wanna do, please donate the money so we can make you the best use of it. Do you find that, uh, I mean, during the holidays, obviously, how, was Thanksgiving a lot of a lot of folks? Was it a little bit more than what you guys are normally doing on your daily Thursday? We always see a really great influx during the holiday season. So the month of November, you can always tell that that's happening. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of activity in the warehouse. People are donating food, bringing in turkeys. The generosity is gotcha. really outstanding. So we definitely see these two months escalating in both escalating food and donations and gotcha. it's fantastic and that carries us through a little bit the rest of the year but hunger is a year-round issue there's no wrong time to no give. no that's right last thing volunteers do you guys need volunteers or always. how are you guys doing okay um we super bowl volunteers were pretty much wrapped up on i okay. know people are always interested in that but yeah because they get the leftovers right they do <laughs> um they do everybody likes to be in the excitement there gotcha, so gotcha. yeah um but yeah we have a lot of opportunities coming up this year that are okay. new with the kids kitchen which we'll be back to talk about where you're going to be preparing meals for kids okay um but definitely there's a lot of opportunities visit us at thefooddepot.org okay. okay um hit us up on the contact form and tell us that you're interested and we're going to make it happen for you. Awesome. Great. Jill, thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah, always a pleasure. Have Absolutely. a have a great holiday too. Will do. You yeah. too. Awesome. Folks, thank you. I want to thank Christina. I want to thank Adrian, uh, the the ladies behind the camera that make this all possible. So I want to thank them. Folks, uh, have a safe week. Have a great week. This has been City Hall Live. Adios. Adios.